Prime Minister Joseph John Gute calls for international support as Cameroon goes scouting for funds for the reconstruction and development of the crisis devastated Northwest and Southwest regions. The Cameroon Pilot Business Incubator injects a new crop of entrepreneurs in the business market as the idea based institution graduates its pioneer batch of trainees in business incubation. Cameroon's national air carrier, Cameco, begging for reconstruction, and restru restructuring and rehabilitation as concerns mount as to whether the company can take off for real and stay afloat. Those are our lead stories. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us on the 7.30 News. I am Ben Manupufong. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. You're welcome once again. The Prime Minister, head of government, has launched a special appeal for Cameroon's friends and development partners to step up their financial contributions towards the plan for the reconstruction and development of the crisis heat northwest and southwest regions of the country. Joseph John Gute made the plea in Yaoundé today as he chaired an interministerial meeting to evaluate the progress at the peace building initiative. The session that was attended by members of the diplomatic corps and representatives of international organizations also examined the modalities of channeling humanitarian aid in Cameroon. Christian Cheatam reports from the Star Building. The government of Cameroon is in need of funding to execute the presidential plan for the reconstruction and development of the northwest and southwest regions. The country has already mobilized 10% of the 89.6 billion required for the first phase. This meeting was meant to evaluate the progress of the initiative and mobilize the support of international partners. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute told the diplomats that the populations of the Northwest and Southwest are in a compelling situation and need their aid. We are looking forward to embarking on, on some uh, uh, missions to our friendly countries to make sure that um, some of the promises that have been made are brought to maturity. The session also evaluated the way humanitarian bodies channel aid to crisis zones in Cameroon. We have had some difficulties in the past because most of the time some of these agencies go to the field and operate without the formal information of the local administrative authorities. The Prime Minister has insisted that we should hold meetings regularly so that we can exchange information and that the, the, the local administrative authorities can know exactly what is the calendar, what is the agenda of the humanitarian NGOs. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute re-echoed at the end of the session that Cameroon needs her friends now more than ever to help revive hope in the northwest and southwest regions. The principles of national sovereignty, non-interference in internal affairs, the prohibition of threats or use of force, and the peaceful resolution of conflicts will henceforth dictate the defense and cooperation between Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. This is the substance of a cooperation agreement signed in Malabo yesterday on joint actions on defense and cross-border security with Joseph Betty as some of the minister delegates at the presidency in charge of defense, signing for Cameroon, and Leandro Becali and Kogo, the national defense minister of Equatorial Guinea, signing for his country. Albert Njembande comments that the content of the accord attests to the need for both countries to work together for peace and social cohesion along their common borders. This is QC in the Tem Valley Division of Cameroon. Next door is a Bibeyin chief town of the Kietem province of Equatorial Guinea. 
On this borderline are people living with the same historical and sociocultural heritage. They are caught signed this 21st of July in Malabo also falls in that spirit, taking into account recent developments which have strained relations between the two countries. Through the accord signed by the country's defense ministers, the two nations have recommitted themselves to strengthening defense and security cooperation based on the principles of national sovereignty, non-interference in internal affairs, and the prohibition of threats or the use of force and the peaceful settlement of disputes. With the terms and references of the accords endorsed by Presidents Paul B. of Cameroon and Teodoro Obiangeman Bazogo of Equatorial Guinea, we use the occasion to review relations between the two countries and use the mandate given us by our President Paul Bia to take a commitment that security and defense forces of both countries work together to clarify all misunderstandings registered on our land border. I can assure you that those misunderstandings are now a thing of the past. Simply put, both countries have agreed that just like border insecurity could only be detrimental to both countries, joint actions on defense and cross-border security will as well be profitable to both. The IDEA-based National Pilot Business Incubator has sent out its first batch of trainees. The close to 20 laureates who received training on how to conceive, design and execute profit-oriented business, businesses graduated today in a ceremony chaired by the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Ashil Basilikan III. Ebenezer Akanga captured the key moments of the pioneering event as it unfolded in IDEA today. For about eight months, the 18 graduates who are project holders in business creation received coaching in identifying and developing their entrepreneurial potentials. According to the coordinator of the National Pilot Business Incubator, the graduates have received solid training which will enable them to implement their business plans. I believe that I will succeed and make the business turn of us and also boost the economy of Cameroon and we can also expand abroad. Laureates who are most advanced in the maturation of their projects will receive technical and material support from the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises for their implementation. These young entrepreneurs have been trained, uh, uh, equipped now with new skills, and uh, we are convinced on the basis of the variety of domain, be it in the uh, area of uh, uh, trans transform transforming uh, agricultural goods, be it in the area of textile, they have now business plans that can enable them to uh, go safely to investors. Created in 2018, the National Pilot Business Incubator is a reception, training and support center for project holders and above all, a reference center for innovation, creativity and assistance for business development in the Central African sub-region. The two-day reflection on the drafting and orientation of the 2021 state budget of Cameroon has ended in Yaoundé with resolution to lay emphasis on the reconstruction of the northwest and southwest regions and the acceleration of the ongoing decentralization process in the country. Finance Minister Louis-Paul Motaze, who closed the deliberations, invited the budgetary experts to put a special eye on the follow-up of the government's economic and financial program. Ewane Pole is here with a summation of the key resol resolutions. The seminar jointly organized by the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development brought together officials charged with drafting the state's budget. For two days, a number of exposés were presented to enable the stakeholders identify orientations to follow in order to come up with a 2021 budget that responds to the country's needs and challenges. To do finance law, we will work with uh, more administration and we have to understand all we have to use to do that uh, law. Encourage local production and empower less. The Minister of Finance, Louis-Paul Motaze, 
emphasize that much attention will be paid on the follow-up of the government's economic and financial program, as well as on intensifying the country's socio-economic development. In regard to resolutions of the major national dialogue, the minister said the budget under preview will equally handle the speeding up of the decentralization process and the reconstruction of the northwest and southwest regions. Autistic federations from across the board in Cameroon have been expressing gratitude to the President of the Republic for passing the law on cultural and artistic association in the country adopted in Parliament recently. In a series of audiences granted them today by the Minister of Arts and Culture, Bidungwat, the artist handed him a motion as a testimony of their support to the head of state. The artist saluted the law as one that paves the way for professionalism in this sector while opening a wide market for them in, in and out of the country. The law creating artistic associations in Cameroon was passed by the President of the Republic on the 20th of July, 2020. And work on the Mengong Sangmelima Road in the south region of Cameroon that is already 70% gone has been brought to a halt owing to the uncompromising attitude of the local populations who are still demanding compensation before their property can either be appropriated and or evacuated. This was the re reality that was presented to the minister in charge of public contracts, Ibrahim Talba Mala, as he entered the second day of his evaluation visit to the of public contracts projects under execution in the south. As Pontianus Lawong reports from CRTV South, Minister Talba Mala has promised to liaise with the other partner ministries to enable the contractors meet the December 20 deadline. Construction work on the Mingong Sangmelima Highway started in 2012 with the Spanish firm that saw its contract terminated with little or nothing to write home about. In 2015, another foreign firm, Arab Contractors, took over and five months to the deadline, the work is estimated at 70% complete. The minister delegate at the presidency in charge of public contracts has been presented a litany of problems slowing the pace of work. We have uh, achieved about 70% 70, 70 of the the road, but the remaining uh, problem is all uh, some details according to the FIBA, Camtel FIBA, and also for the payment of the population to displace them and uh, also the payment of the contractors. The visiting member of government has assured stakeholders that he will concert with colleagues of relevant ministries to address the problems so as to enable the contractors hit the deadline. He has also stressed on the socio-economic significance of the 74-kilometer stretch. The main objective is that the population can uh, freely make circulation between Ebolova and San Melima and why not uh, in the Republic of Congo. Minister Tabla Mala used the opportunity to inspect other road projects in the Jan Lobo Division, namely the Ngolbang Zoetele, Zoetele Nkuzok, and Meyomesala Mezese Sangmilima Highways, the execution of which he assessed as satisfactory. It's six months today since the management of the container terminal changed hands at the Douala Seaport. Already, the port officials are saying that they are not, uh, not uh, far from attaining the financial and technical objectives they fixed for themselves during this first six months. A financial and technical breakthrough that they say has been made possible thanks to an inclusive managerial approach that brings all stakeholders on board. Clarice Aray Takang has an appraisal of this initial success story. Ensuring that activities at the container yard go on H3. This has been the challenge to tackle head-on in the past six months. Of loading of vessels and safe container movements were closely monitored to attain the expected objectives. We achieve a level of 20 moves per hour by discharging and loading vessels. We are delivered around 58,000 containers under these six months. If we had to rate them, we'll give an 18 on 20 mark. There was no congestion at the port, so the takeover has been perfect. 
The bargain was equally to enable the state to get a return on investment. This was centered around a more appropriate exploitation and managing maintainers' operations at the container yard. All our activities that we carry on during these six months has permitted us to realize income of 23 billion 982 million. We have reduced 10% on land operations. And that 10% represents 1 billion 600 million that we have returned to our economy. The performance of the container yard at the dual autonomous port was not spared from the impact of COVID-19. Hopes are on seeing the strategies put in place to preserve various partnerships bear fruit. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. And this is the 7.30 News on the CRTV, broadcasting live from Yaoundé. Our news dossier for tonight zooms in on Cameroon's national air carrier, Camelco, that is virtually on the brink of collapse. The company is currently engaged in a desperate fight for survival, and experts say its rather ambitious restructuring and rehabilitation plan has so far been a big disappointment. A one a pollen now chronicles some of the challenges that the country's moribund flagship air carrier has been confronting ever since it started uh, nurturing the dream of taking off again. Cameco launched operations in 2011 as a successor to Cameroon Airlines. The head of state, President Pobia, resurrected the parastatal with a startup capital of 100 million CV francs. The struggle to sustain the Cameroon flag carrier has continued all these years, according to economic experts. Managers of the company have been dependent on the state support in promoting a risky turnaround strategy hinged on intensifying the fleet and network. To date, there is little to suggest that the new company is facing any less turbulence than its forebearer. Economic experts add that the airline's present financial situation is not good enough to hope for a better future. The hope is that international experts can help Cameco onto a more stable footing to boost its competitiveness. The burning question on every lip now is how to rescue Cameco from total collapse. While some think that privatization might be the way out, aviation experts on their part hold that there are still a panoply of options to be exploited to keep the company afloat. And one of such options is the restructuring and rehabilitation plan that has to lay emphasis on performance and good governance. As Clarice Array Takang reports, it may not be time to despair yet. Aircraft grounded due to lack of maintenance, a debt estimated at more than 100 billion CV francs, disgruntled staff with months of unpaid wages trailing them, and the list of woes checking into the national airliner seems endless. Aviation experts, however, believe that keeping the structure in the skies is possible. Cameco is a, an airline company. With, we need very, uh, a very high capital, a uh, so very, very high level of investment in capital. So uh, I think that uh, the private sector uh, is uh, welcome to, to help or to, yes, to help the government uh, in funding the, the company. But uh, the problem is that uh, the company actually is not privatizable because the company has a very, uh, very high amount of Debt. Other options could equally produce expected results. Technically, Cameco is in bankrupt, bankruptcy, and uh, I think that uh, we need really uh, to, to make a, very, a good effort on the treatment of the debt. To some, privatization must not necessarily be it. 
In the case of Kameko, it is difficult to blend the public and private when the structure has specific missions to fulfill. Studies should be done to get qualified human resources to get the environment adapted to the economic model. Opinions hold that, while a crash seems inevitable, the right buttons to push could steer the company to a more sustainable and positive destination for the good of the domestic economy. It remains a delicate period for most nursing mothers postpartum care. As gynecologists say, if care is not taken, the, uh, the coronavirus can easily be transmitted from a COVID-19 infected nursing mother to the newborn baby. Most nursing mothers tested positive for, for COVID-19 are therefore called upon to respect prescribed health measures by gynecologists to avoid any possible transmission of the virus from mother to child. Our reporter Borden Sama is at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center with his guest, Professor Robinson Boo, gynecologist and director of family health in the Ministry of Public Health, with whom he now addresses the issue of postpartum care for COVID-19 nursing mothers. Hello, Baldwin. Come on with your guests and welcome to the 730 News. Good evening to you, Ben Menopofong. As you rightly said, it is a delicate period for most of these COVID-19 positive nursing mothers. The postpartum care that they receive, given that most of them don't know exactly what to do in order to avoid infecting their newborn babies. The do's and the don'ts during uh, the postpartum care given to COVID-19 uh, positive nursing mothers. That is what we shall be discussing tonight. As you rightly said a while ago with our guest, the Professor Robinson Boo. He is a seasoned gynecologist and the director of family health in the Ministry of Public Health. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. When we talk about the postpartum care, what is it all about? How important is it? And how is it carried out? Uh, the postpartum is a period after delivery. And a specific kind of disease can occur during this period. And so it is very essential. It's a reproductive right for all women who have delivered, be they COVID infected or not infected. So they come and see uh, the healthcare providers who will examine them and advise them, especially on very specific things like breastfeeding, like family planning, and so on. So it's a very essential part of reproductive health, which must be respected, which must not be put aside because of the advent of COVID. There is no specific uh, uh, management during the postpartum totally related to COVID. It's the same thing. So we advise all women who have delivered COVID infected or not, to respect the postpartum appointments with the healthcare providers, wherever they are. And uh, the process? It's a simple process. You come, you examine, till, uh, they take a little bit of history of what has happened since you left the hospital. Then they examine you to make sure that you respect, uh, uh, let's say, breastfeeding, family planning, and then kind of what they call uh, educative talks or counseling, which may be group with the individual on the best aspects of managing the baby uh, after delivery. Thank you so much, Professor Robinson Bo. We remind our viewers that you are a seasoned gynecologist and the director of our family health in the Ministry of Public Health. As we heard it from our guest, whether you have been tested positive or not for COVID-19, we are talking about uh, nursing mothers. They should respect all these measures outlined by Professor Robinson Bo so that they will avoid infecting <coughs> their newborn babies during the postpartum care for these nursing mothers. Back to you, Ben Menopofo. Thanks very much, Baldwin Sama. That was very important to know. We now go over to other developments on the news. A technical education was introduced in Cameroon way back in the 1940s. At the time, it was intended to train young Cameroonians to have gainful employment at the end of their curriculum. Training centers were then constructed, later transformed into technical training schools, and by 2012, most of them were upgraded to incorporate industrial and commercial components. In Act 3 of our series on technical education, Beatrice tonight takes us to the discovery of a pioneering technical college of education, the Yaoundé-based Setik Shal at Tangana. It derives its name from one of the emblematic figures of the colonial days, Shal at Tangana. But its fame comes from its fields of training. We train people who are ready for employment. 
When they live here, they can create their own enterprises. People who want to repair their ACs and even build their houses come here for their services. College Charlatanganov yesterday has evolved in status from a school that trained solely in technical to one that trains in technical, industrial and commercial. Initially created for boys, the school opened its doors to girls. Bang Ben Christian Solange is a success story of the school. It was very difficult among boys. They told us our place was not in the technical. Back then, enterprises used to come and recruit us after the certificate. We did a lot of practicals back then. Technical school Shala Tangana is a lead school in technical education with several batches of graduates who are today self-employed. Graduates who are into woodwork, building, electricity, and lots more. The school has seen 14 principals come and go since creation, but its infrastructure, like its training equipment, has aged. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, there has been the propagation of truth and counter-truths about the mode of transmission and uh, propagation of the disease across social media platforms. The latest modes that are trending on these platforms in the, uh, is the claim, or rather are the claim, that the virus can be transmitted by air and through sexual intercourse. However, the most mode of the most known mode of transmission of the disease according to experts and who are on WHO sources is mainly from person to person and through respiratory droplets produced by infected persons. But frankly, can COVID-19 be sexually transmitted, uh, a sexually transmitted infection? And can it be an airborne disease? Yoti Kaleli Songe accosted experts and specialists for an explanation. And coronavirus is more or less becoming the talk of the day. For now, I've not heard of anything like that that, is, that can be transmitted through sexual intercourse, apart from the normal ones that the World Health Organization have told us. There are, however, assertions that the novel coronavirus can be transmitted either sexually or by air. Those allegations are rumors. There is no proof. There is no clear evidence as of now if uh, it could be transmitted sexually, but uh, research is still ongoing. As concerns airborne transmission, medics agree there's a possibility. If people don't respect physical distances, they're not putting on face masks and they're talking uh, among themselves, there's a probability that the mucus or air droplet from somebody's uh, mouth could be conveyed uh, to uh, the opposite person by air. When you are in a small room and then you sneak off without the mask, the drops can contain virus which will remain suspended for about 10 minutes. It means that during that period, if someone come in, it can inhalate the virus, you see. Until research confirms both claims, medical practitioners advise that individuals keep respecting COVID-19 barrier measures. And face masks are most indicated. Now we end this edition on this sad note. The CPDM member of the National Assembly for Mayo Luti constituency in the north region of the country, Honorable Haruna Abdullahi Boge, is no more. The 41-year-old who was on his first mandate died today after a deadly car crash on the Ngaundere Garwa Road. The senior instructor of youth and animation was member of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the National Assembly. Assembly. His most recent parliamentary outing was at the government high school LAM in the Mayo Luti division in the north region where he donated aluminium sheets and financial aid to the school institution. And that's it for this edition of the 730 News. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Try to be there. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing 